Hi guys! In today's video, we'll be making this koi fish inspired sparkly mermaid tail. It occurred to me a few days ago that it's been like months since I last did a mermaid, and I was like, this can't be right, so here we are! I prefer to use latex like I did in my previous mermaid tails just because it makes them flexible so you can actually pose and bend the doll's leg inside. But I took the time to strategically place all of the glitter this time and it's made with a bit hexagon glitters, glitters that kind of look like fish scales. So I think it gives kind of a different effect. So let's get started. I used a monster high for this project but you can also make it for a Barbie or any other type of doll. To make the pattern for the tail, I cover the doll's lower body in kitchen film and then wrap it in tape, kind of like a little mummy, because this way you kind of almost get a cast of the doll's body so you get the shapes and then you can cut the two pieces apart, just making a sort of side seam and this way you have the actual shape that you need. Once you have the two pieces, you want to press them flat and then transfer them onto paper, adding a bit of almost seam allowance around all of the edges. Then you want to sketch out your tail fin. I did one obviously inspired by a koi fish and also did two smaller set of fins. Now onto the latex. I get my latex at my local craft store and for this project I'll be mixing in a bit of acrylic paint, white for the most of the tail and a bit of orange for the spots. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to make sure that the latex wasn't transparent because it normally is with a slightly yellow tint or at least the type I use is. And the glitter I'll be using on top is a bit transparent so I need to make sure I had a proper background. So you just want to mix a few small batches of the latex with a bit of paint, try not to get too many air bubbles in there. Now take one of your pattern pieces and place it inside a clear plastic bag and then you can start applying the latex on top. I started with the spots just to make sure I got them in there and I used a silicone sculpting tool to sort of dab it on just because it's very easy to clean, a brush might get ruined because the latex just sticks to everything. But I apply it little by little and the latex tends to pull on the plastic but just keep applying it and smoothing it around until you get it where you need it. And if you have any air bubbles rising to the surface you can always go right back in with a needle tool while the latex is still wet and pop the bubbles. Once I was done with the spots I filled in the rest of the front piece using the white latex mix. The white mixture did give me a lot more bubbles than the orange one and I think that's because the acrylic paint I used, the white was you know, a thicker pasty consistency where the orange was more liquid. So I think that I just needed to mix a lot more with the white and that just worked in a lot more air but oh well, you can just pop them. And I forgot to show the front piece all filled in but I just filled in all the white and then left it to dry. And then I moved on to the back piece, which I did the exact same thing by first filling in the spots and then filling in the rift of the white and allowing it to dry completely. If you wonder about the slit at the top of the back piece, this is just to give the piece better shape in the end and also give it more booty room. So once the front and back piece has dried, it's time to get out our glitters and I use these white and these orange hexagon glitters and I chose them because I thought they look kind of like fish scales and I used a little more latex that I hadn't mixed paint into so it was clear to stick them onto both the front and the back piece in rows that kind of fit together, you know, to kind of keep this uh, scaly pattern. With my previous shimmery mermaid tails, I just made a glitter mix using both hexagons but also smaller glitters and sprinkled it randomly on the wet latex in the first layer and then encapsulated it. And that is nice and shimmery and I like the look. But for this one, I really wanted to try to get this more scaly pattern so it's 
yeah, it just was more of a pattern. And in my mind, I was like, oh, it's gonna look so good. I have these two types, and it's gonna look so nice, and I'm just gonna arrange them. And then I started doing it, and I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> it took <clears throat> a while, not gonna lie. So um, if you don't have the patience or time to sit and arrange them like this, you can just sprinkle them on there and it will look nice still so that is definitely an option but i started doing this and i was like i was gonna finish and in the end i really like the end result i think it looks really really nice but it is a bit time consuming so um you've been warned i was actually requested to do a koi fish mermaid a long time ago when i was in really like a stream of mermaids on my channel um and i really like the idea of you know mixing other types of fish or creatures into like mermaid world so i really like the idea and i thought that it would look really nice so i will be finishing this mermaid off in a different video doing the complete repaint And here's the front piece with all the glitters attached and I turned it a little bit so you could see the shimmer. I think it looks really cool like this. And next we're gonna encapsulate it with more latex. Unfortunately this does add a slightly yellow tint because of the color of the actual latex and it dumps down the shimmer just a tiny bit. But I feel it is really necessary because otherwise the glitters might just flake off and that would just not be nice. So we need to encapsulate it. Once you have the whole piece covered, you just want to leave it to dry completely and it ends up looking like this. And then it's a repeat performance with the back piece. And when those two pieces were drying, we can move on to the fin pieces. And into that mix I also added a bit of silver mica powder just for a bit of pearl-like shimmer that would fit the glitter. So that was a mix of that and a bit of white acrylic paint. But I made sure to mix the powder and the paint first because otherwise the powder went lumpy. And then I used this just to fill in the fin pieces again on a plastic sheet. The only like mandatory fin for a mermaid is the tail fin, but sometimes I like to make sets of smaller fins as well. And for this I did two other sets, a set that was to go upon the lower legs and a, a set of slightly bigger ones to go by the hips. And that was just because I felt it added to the look and feel of a koi fish, but that's totally up to you so it's optional. Once dry the fin pieces look like this. You can't really see the shimmer, but it's there. And then I used a bit of white acrylic paint to paint on lines. So then it's time to powder our pieces using some talcum powder. And this is very important because the latex tends to have a sticky surface. So if you don't powder both sides of it, it will stick to itself and it'll get really dusty and it'll just not be nice at all. So it's very important that you brush it with talcum powder or baby powder or something like that. And as I said, remember to do both sides. And then if your pieces has gotten a bit uneven around the edges because of pooling or whatever, you can go around the edges using a small pair of scissors just to even them out. So here's the trimmed and finished fin pieces and then you want to powder and trim the front and back main piece as well.
and then we're ready to start assembling. Firstly, you're going to use a bit more clear latex to stick together the slit at the back piece. Then you want to attach the tail fin to the bottom of the front piece. Then you want to place your doll and use more latex to stick the back piece onto the front just by the tail fin. And then you want to start wrapping the back piece around the doll so that the front piece can touch it and stick the two together with more latex. And this was the reason that we added a bit of seam allowance to both front and back pieces so we were sure they would overlap and could stick together. So you just want to keep doing this all the way up the side seam on both sides until you have the doll completely encased in the tail. Once the tail is done up on both sides, you want to add a bit of extra latex along the side seam because there will be a tiny bit of, well, the front piece will seem a little raised compared to the back piece because they're overlapping and you can take this away by adding a bit of latex and once that's dry, you just want to brush it with a bit more of talcum powder and you end up having a very nice seam. Then we can move on to adding some more details, like adding the white lines to the back side of the tail fins, which I originally forgot. And then on the front part of it, we can add a bit of the same glitter that we used on the main piece, just so the two pieces blend together a little better, and then encapsulate them in latex. And I also drew lines of latex going over the white lines of the tail fin just to encapsulate the paint so I was sure it wouldn't scrape off and it also helps just to give a bit of a three-dimensional effect. Then you want to add on the smaller fins and also add latex to the lines of those. Finish off by powdering any fresh latex and then our moment is done. I really like how this tail turned out and I actually think this is probably my favorite out of all the mermaid tails I've done, which is a few by now. So yeah. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and if you want to see the next part of this mermaid, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you'll be notified. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in a new video real soon, bye!